right friends welcome back to news capsule this is the fifth capsule of 32nd week and this is a news in focus that means the news which require detailed explanation are taken here and explained first one is visit of wang yi to india he is the foreign minister of china he recently visited india and in this connection he met the prime minister and india raised specific issues india raised four issues first one is china's opposition of india's entry to nuclear suppliers group and please don't forget nuclear suppliers group has got 48 member countries and decisions are taken by consensus that means all the countries must agree for any decision there are news reports that china objected to india's entry in this connection india raised this issue when the foreign minister of china visited india this is one aspect second aspect is 46 billion dollar cpec runs through park occupied kashmir this china pakistan economic corridor please look into this slide this runs through Pakistan occupied Kashmir this is the second issue raised by india the third one is china's opposition to blacklisting of lashkar-e-taiba leader hafiz saeed then another important aspect is china's opposition to india's united nations level campaign to blacklist pakistan based terror mastermind masood azhar and India says Masood Azhar was associated with 2008 Mumbai attacks and China is opposing the issue to include Masood Azhar in globally designated terrorists and these four issues were taken up when the foreign minister Wang Yi visited India and our prime minister is going to visit China in connection with the G20 summit at Hangzhou now look at the second news in focus that is the no separate rail budget from 2017-18 and this is a major change as far as the nation's finances are concerned now rail budget from next year will become part and parcel of general budget and what is the origin that is william michel akwart in the year 1921 that means the committee headed by akwart the popularly known as akwart committee recommended in the year 1921 railway finances to be separated from the general finances in those days because of expansion of railways railway finances used to be substantial in comparison to general finances but nowadays railway finances are not that significant may constitute maybe around 15% or so in comparison to general budget so nowadays they are not that significant and based on akwart committee report separate rail budget was born in 1924 so from 1924 right up to 2016 almost for around 92 years separate rail budget is there and from now onwards that is from 2017 18 onwards they will be remerged and now so as to ensure remerger without the hassles finance ministry constituted a five member committee to work out the modalities if you look at the other aspects additional burden on account of seventh pay commission recommendations on the railways as a whole will be rupees 41000 crores per annum annual outgo on subsidies is rupees 32000 crores per annum and another important aspect is due to the delay in completion of projects the cost overruns are rupees 1.07 lakh crores of rupees and at the same time 442 ongoing rail projects are there and the throw forward liability will be rupees 1.86 lakh crore and now the finance minister has to look at all these aspects before framing the budget and please don't forget this is a part of narendra modi government's reform agenda cic that is the central information commission this pulled up 
GEAC that is Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. CIC pulled up GEAC for not disclosing information on biosafety data of GM mustard. Before going into the details of biosafety data of genetically modified mustard crop, let us look at two issues. One is what is the Central Information Commission and what is Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. First one is the CIC. CIC is a statutory body established based on RTI Act 2005, Right to Information Act of 2005, stipulated establishment of Information Commission at the central level as well as at state levels. At the central level, Central Information Commission is there and one Chief Information Commissioner and not more than 10 Information Commissioners will be there. So, this is the structure of Central Information Commission. And if you look at the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, this is the nodal authority and this is the committee under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And please do not forget the new Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change is Anil Madhav Tave and Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee is under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and GEAC is the nodal authority for approval of proposals relating to genetically modified organisms or crops. So, if some GM crop is to be introduced, that is to be approved by GEAC which is under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and GEAC not only approves proposals related to genetically engineered organisms, but also looks at experimental field trials. And now let us come back to the issue. This is with regard to the field trials of genetically modified mustard. So far for food crops, genetically modified crops are not introduced in this country. GM crops are predominant when you look at cotton. And if you look at food crops, India said no till date for food crops. Now, experiments or field trials are going on with regard to GM mustard. Central Information Commission previously ordered GEAC to disclose all the relevant information including the biosafety data and detailed minutes by April 30. However, the ministry has not uploaded all the details it only uploaded the gist of the minutes of the meetings and the latest minutes have not been uploaded. Under these circumstances, a case was filed by anti-GM activist Kavita Kuruganti against the Environment Ministry and Central Information Commission pulled up the ministry for the labs. This is all about CIC pulling up GEAC and we learnt a lot about what is the CIC and what is the GEAC. Look at the last one, National Committee on Trade Facilitation was set up. And please do not forget, recently India signed or you can say India ratified trade facilitation agreement with the World Trade Organization. Subsequently, India has to give compliance on various issues and to give compliance, establishment of a committee is mandatory. Now, NCTF was set up as a national level body. This is a national committee on trade facilitation. So, this was set up as national level body and the basic purpose is to facilitate domestic coordination and implementation of trade facilitation agreement provisions. And if someone talks about a trade facilitation agreement that is with the World Trade Organization and so as to give compliance, so as to identify the required legislative changes to assess compliance, this national level body that is the National Committee on Trade Facilitation was set up. And please do not forget this will be headed by the cabinet secretary that is very important. So, the chairman for this NCTF is cabinet secretary and this will be housed under central board of excise and customs. So, NCTF secretariat will be housed with 
Central Board of Excise and Customs and the chairperson is the Cabinet Secretary. These things please don't forget. Right friends, this is the news and focus for this week. Please do join for the sixth capsule that is the read between the lines. Have a nice day. Thank you.